please study with more Milliput Madness. At long last, I'm back with another wood turning and Milliput project. And the starting point for this project is this lovely big slab of Sapili that my friend John Walker gave me. It's a beautiful big lump of wood. I'm just sort of finding the centre here and I'm making up a makeshift compass out of my dividers and just marking out the circle. I then took it over to the bandsaw and then it's a case of putting the face plate on it. I have a bit of a love-hate thing with Sapelia. It's uh, really um, produces some lovely pieces but I'm not keen on the dust or the smell. I start off bowl gouge, just truing up the uh, sides just so I can get it running uh, running nicely, I can get the speed up a little bit then. And then I start to give it some shape. So uh, just giving it a rounded edge. And this is all with the 3 8 bowl gouge. Doing some push cuts. Trying to avoid any tear out. And as you can see I'm getting some nice smooth cuts there. It's gradually taking shape. But, uh, you can see it doesn't really produce long shavings like some would. It's, uh, you, you get a lot of these sort of flakes. I'm marking a tenon on the bottom, which I'm just defining with a parting tool. I'm also making another groove here because this uh, bowl is going to have a foot. I'm now doing push cuts up to my... Uh, mark that I've made there with the parting tool. So I'm creating steps. The middle one being the tenon that's going to go in the chuck jaws. And here I'm just shaping the underside of the bowl, creating that dovetail on the tenon. And I'm rounding over the foot to create a bead. I'm using a variety of tools here, point tools, uh, I'm even using a, a half inch spindle gouge at one point just to create that beaded edge to the foot. And these are uh, sort of finishing cuts really, producing the final contour to the outside of the bowl. Once again trying to avoid tear out. It's easy to sand away a few tool marks, not so easy to get rid of tear out. And then a bit of sanding using a, one of these self-propelled bowl sanders. And here I'm cutting the recess for the inlay for the milliput. And it's a deeper than a usual recess because this is going to go full thickness right through the wall of the bowl. I'm using a parting tool. A bit of dusting and there you can get a better view of that recess. Uh, here's the old milliput. Black, white and terracotta for this one. The terracotta goes well with the sapili. I'm also going to be using a bit of epoxy resin. So it's a two part epoxy putty. And I start by mixing the lighter colour first. So I'm doing the white. White is quite tricky to mix because it's difficult to tell when it's completely mixed. Um, but if you mix it for a good five minutes and then I'm rolling it out flat between uh, sheets of baking paper or baking parchment and then I'm creating roughly a rectangular shape just rolling that out I then put this in the fridge to keep it cool to just slow up the set a bit then I'm on to the next colour which is the terracotta and then I mixed some black and I'm layering up these uh, sheets I've laid out. Each sheet went in the fridge as I, uh, as I did it, like I say, just to slow up the uh, set. Give me a bit more working time. And I've layered them up, roll them out a little bit and then I start rolling it into a cane. With the black on the outside. But then it's a case of just rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling until you get a longer and longer cane. And then I chop it into little segments. And you are better chopping rather than slicing. If you slice, you tend to drag the milliput pattern a bit. Chopping is uh, seems to work better. 
So I'm chopping it up into all equal pieces. And then what I do is these these little slices get laid on their side and sort of squidge together to form this flat snake or ribbon. And you want it to be just narrower than the recess really and a bit deeper than the recess. That's the uh, best way of doing it. So this took a bit of time. The next thing I do, which is something I don't often do, is I line the recess with some epoxy resin. And this is slow set epoxy resin. It takes uh, several hours to fully cure. I only do this really if it's a particularly wide inlay or it's an inlay that is going right through from one side to the other. Just gives it a bit more security. I know the bowl's not going to fly to pieces when I turn it. And here I'm placing that ribbon of milliput into the recess. And I'm trying to avoid getting voids. I'm just seating it all the way round. And then it's a case of squidging it all in. Just keep squidging it and squidging it and squidging it, pressing it in, making sure you get rid of all the voids. It'll start to look a bit messy, but don't worry about this because uh, it all looks good in the end. So, so I've left it overnight, then we're back on the lathe, and here I'm cutting back the milliput to reveal the pattern. I think I'm using a uh, Easy Wood Tools Easy Rougher here. And then I'm sanding, and there's the pattern emerging. You can see it's looking really good. Bit more sanding and then some dusting and then we're going to put some uh, cellulose sanding sealer on I use the spray for this sort of thing but you can really see the pattern and the grain begin to pop then it's Yorkshire grit two coats of sanding sealer and then it's uh, once that's dry it's a liberal coating of Yorkshire grit and then you work it and work it and it gets finer and finer and then buff it all the way. Off with the face plate, back on the lathe, then we can do some hollowing. Lots of hollowing. 3 8 bowl gouge, frequent trips to the uh, sharpening machine. Then you just see the uh, the other side of the inlay appearing there. And there's the pattern appearing on the other side. Checking the thickness, making sure I've got a nice even wall thickness with some calipers. And then uh, making sure I've got a nice contour to the uh, base of the bowl. Bowl sander again. And then some power sanding in the middle. Two coats of uh, sanding sealer and more Yorkshire grit. And there it is. Just put a light coat of microcrystalline wax on it just to finish it. This is the Renaissance uh, brand. But there are quite a few around. But I'll leave that for 20 to 30 minutes and then buff it off. Lovely bit of chatoyancy there. Bowl reversing jaws. I think that's on the easy chuck because they're the biggest set of jaws I've got. I'm just turning away that tenon using a bowl gouge. Bit of sanding, bit of branding, and we're done. Here it is, the finished bowl. It's a 15 inch shallow bowl or dish, uh, beaded foot and milliput inlay. That's with white, black and terracotta, and this is full thickness, so it go, it's not just a surface design, it goes right through from one side to the other. Um, it's quite thin, four or five mil thick, so it's quite lightweight. Um, despite its size yeah but really pleased with that I don't like the dust sapili producers I'm not keen on the smell either but uh, it does make a nice piece anyway many thanks for watching please like share and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll be back soon with some more videos there's a few stills of, uh, of the bowl showing the inlay well I hope you enjoyed the video if you did, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps me a lot. 
be great if you could subscribe if you haven't already but i've got some more wood turning videos uh, in the edit so there'll be some more coming up very very soon More rubbish coming soon.